Hello, my name is Laura Robert. Today we shall be looking at the topic cell and its environment. Objectives of lesson. By the end of the lesson, students should be able to 1. Mention the three main processes by which materials move in and out of cells. 2. Define the three processes mentioned above. 3. Mention the factors that can affect the official. 4. Mention the conditions necessary for osmosis. 5. State at least three biological significance each of the efficient and osmosis in plants and animals. And 6. State at least two differences between osmosis and diffusion. Now, the environment or surrounding of a living cell is made up of fluid. This fluid may be external fluid such as the aquatic habitat in which unicellular organisms such as paramecium, amoeba and the rest of them live in. Or it can be the cellular fluid that bathes the body of cells of higher animals within. Now materials are constantly moving in and out between the cells and this environment. This takes place by three main processes namely 1. Diffusion 2. Osmosis and 3. Active transport we shall be discussing these three processes one after the other. Number one, diffusion. What is diffusion? This is the movement of molecules or ions from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration until equilibrium is achieved. Diffusion takes place in liquid and gases only. Now, in an experiment of diffusion in liquid, Potassium permanganate crystal or solution is placed in a beaker of water and allowed to stand. It was observed that the purple color of the potassium permanganate starts to gradually spread outward from the crystal solution spot. Eventually, the color spread evenly throughout the water medium to maintain the same shade of color. Now, from the image here on the screen, we have four beakers. A, B, C, and D. In beaker A, potassium permanganate solution is dropped in the water. Now the point where the solution touches is the point of higher concentration, where every other part is of lower concentration. B, streak of solution moves downward from that higher concentration to the lower concentration. And C, Purple color of the potassium permanganate spread from higher region to lower region. And D, the color spread evenly throughout the water medium to maintain the same shade of color. Like we said, diffusion can occur in gases. So diffusion in gases include the spread of perfume scent, insecticides spread across a room, or the spread of gases from the anus. Factors that can affect diffusion. Number one, temperature. Diffusion is by thermal motion of molecules. This means that diffusion can be affected by temperature. So the higher the temperature, the higher the rate of diffusion. And the lower the temperature, the lower the rate of diffusion. Two, molecular size. The size of the molecules affects diffusion. The smaller the size, the faster the rate of diffusion, and the bigger the size, the slower the rate of diffusion. Number three, states of matter. Diffusion is faster in gases than in liquid. That is why perfume, anagases, and insecticides can spread faster in the confined places. Now, stirring, shaking of medium, number four. When the medium is stirred or shaken, diffusion occurs faster, unlike when the medium is left on the stop. The medium can be gases or liquid. And number five, concentration difference. When there is a higher level of concentration against a lower level, diffusion is bound to take place. So this process is faster than when there is no difference in concentration. Number two, osmosis. 
Osmosis can be defined as the movement of water molecules from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. A cell membrane or permeable membrane can allow molecules to pass through it freely, but a selective or differential or semi-permeable membrane only allows certain molecules to pass through it. Now if you observe the image here, before osmosis and after osmosis. Now, looking at the first box before osmosis, the red square at the center serves as the selective or semi-permeable membrane. The first layer of that first box shows that the molecule there is of lower concentration, while the other layer shows that the molecule there is of higher concentration. Now let's look at after osmosis. We find out that there is a reduction in the level of water. This is to show that molecule has moved from the first layer of that box into the second one, where we have an increase in the level of water. And it moved across the red or, will I say, the pink um, square shape at the center, which is serving our semi-permeable membrane. This shows that osmosis has taken place. Also, osmosis occurs or involves movement of water molecule from a region where water is more to the region where water is low. The region where water is more is said to be of low concentration, while the region where water is low is said to be of high concentration. Osmosis in living cells. Animal cells contain mainly cytoplasm and cell organelles. The liquid of the cytoplasm or the cell content makes up the internal environment of the cell. The cells are also built externally with fluid so living cells can find themselves in different solutions or conditions. These solutions include 1. Hypertonic solution. This is when the fluid surrounding the cell is more concentrated than the inside of the cell content. So water will move out from the cell into the surrounding fluid or environment, causing the cell to shrink and become flaccid. This process is known as exosmosis. 2. Hypertonic solution. This is when the fluid surrounding the cell is less concentrated than the inside of the cell content. So water will move out from such surrounding fluid or environment into the cells, causing the cells to swell and become what? Turgid. This process is known as endosmosis. Number three, isotonic solution. This is when the surrounding fluid and the cell concentration or content have the same concentration. A net movement of water molecules in and out of the cell does not occur. So this is the ideal condition for cells to survive or live in living organisms. Now this is an image showing an experiment of osmosis in a living cell. Now what is used in this experiment? Potato is used. So the potato is serving as a semi-permeable membrane or selective permeable membrane. Now, this potato is peeled and a hole or a cavity is made at the center. Now, a trough containing water and the water serves as what? Region of lower concentration. So, inside the hollow or cavity of the potato, sugar solution is poured. This serves as a strong solution or higher region of concentration. Now, let's look at the second step of the experiment. After a while, it will be observed that the water level of the trough or the water or the level of water in the trough will reduce while the solution inside the cavity of the potato, the water there will what increase, showing that water has moved from inside the trough through the potato into the what the middle or the cavity of the potato, causing a rise in the solution. This is a good example of how osmosis can take place. Apart from potato, raw yam, 
unripe purple can also be used for this experiment. Differences between diffusion and osmosis. Number one, diffusion. It takes place in liquid and gas media only. Why osmosis? It takes place in liquid medium only. Two, under diffusion. It does not require a selective permeable membrane. But osmosis, it requires a selective permeable membrane. Three, molecules move from higher to lower region in diffusion. But under osmosis, molecules move from lower to higher regions. And four, under diffusion, it takes place in living and non-living cells. But osmosis, it takes place in living cells only. Now we shall be discussing some concepts or terms we will be coming across during osmosis in cells. Number one, turgidity. Turgidity is the condition whereby cells absorb lots of water and so swell up or increase in size to the extent that they become fully stretched or taut. Such a cell is said to be turgid. Know that turgid plant cells cannot burst due to the what rigid cell walls. Let's look at flaccidity. Flaccidity is a condition whereby cells lose water to the environment faster than they can absorb. Such a cell is said to be flaccid. It can occur when there is no water in the soil. Now let's study this image here. We have turgid cell. That is a cell that is taking in water because it is placed in a hypotonic solution. That means the cell content inside the cell is hypertonic. So water moves from the environment into such a cell and it swells up to become fully stretched or turgid. Now, flaccid cells. Such a cell is placed in an hypertonic solution. That means the inside of the cell is hypotonic. So water will move from inside of the cell out into the surrounding environment, causing the, what, the cell to lose its shape or to shrink. Now, turgidity gives support to plants, while flaccidity can cause plants to wilt or die. Another concept we'll be looking at is hemolysis. This is the process whereby red blood cells, when placed in hypotonic or weak solution, absorb so much water so that the cell swells and later burst. You can see the image there. The first one is showing a normal red blood cell. Now the second one is showing a red blood cell taking in water and so it increases in size. And the last one is showing that the cell, after getting so large, it bursts after a while. Now, this is to tell us that when red blood cells become turgid and they still absorb more water, they will burst. That is for animal cells. Now, let's look at plasmolysis. This is the outward movement or flow of water from the inside of a plant cell to the environment when placed in hypertonic solution so that its cytoplasm pulls away from its cell wall. Now let's study the image for plasmolysis. The first one is showing a normal plant cell. Now when this normal plant cell is placed in hypertonic solution, that means the inside of the cell is what hypertonic. So the, st the cell tend to lose water into the environment. And what happened at the end? Plasmolysis. The cytoplasm of the cell pulls away from the cell wall. Okay? Note that hemolysis and plasmolysis eventually lead to the death of cells. Similarity between plasmolysis and hemolysis. Number one, the two processes cause death of cells. Two, they take place in living cells. What about differences between plasmolysis and hemolysis? Number one, under plasmolysis, it takes place in plant cells. Hemolysis, it takes place in animal cells. Two, plasmolysis. It occurs when cells are placed in hypertonic solution, while under hemolysis, it occurs when cells are placed in hypertonic solution. Under plasmolysis, number three, the cell shrinks. While hemolysis, the cell swells and bursts. And then number four, the cell loses water. The cell will lose water, and under hemolysis, cells gain water. 
importance of osmosis and diffusion. Now, diffusion under animals. Number one, gaseous exchange of gases in the lung is by diffusion. Two, exchange of materials like oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrient between mother and the fetus through the placenta is by diffusion. Three, gaseous exchange between the cell and environment of unicellular organism is also by diffusion. Let's look at importance of diffusion in plants. Number one, removal of water in form of vapor in plants during transpiration is by diffusion. Two, gaseous exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen in and out of stomata in plants is also what by diffusion. And three, movement of carbon dioxide for photosynthesis into leaves through the stomata is also by diffusion. Let's look at the importance of osmosis. For animals, movement of water in and out of cell membrane is by osmosis. Osmosis helps to maintain suitable solute concentration for cells to function properly. What about osmosis in plants? Number one, movement of water from soil to roots of plants through the root hairs is by osmosis. And two, conduction of water along the xylem from the root of plant to the stem is also by osmosis. Three, active transport. Okay. This is the movement of molecules or ions across the concentration gradient. Now, active transport is an active process, unlike the others, which are passive processes, because it needs energy produced from respiration to take place. Now, the energy becomes important because material needed to move from a lower region to a higher region across a cell membrane. So that is what we mean by across a concentration that is when molecule is moving from where they are low to where they are what high across a cell membrane look at the image here you can see the first one showing diffusion diffusion osmosis are examples of passive transport now for materials to move from one region to another they don't require energy but for active transport energy is very very important is needed now, examples of example of active transport is the movement of ions in the sodium potassium pool. Now, sodium is low in the red blood cell and higher outside the red blood cell or inside the plasma. It's higher in the plasma. Yet, sodium will move from inside the cell where it is of lower concentration to the plasma where it's of higher concentration. Now, also the reverse is the case for potassium. That means potassium is higher in the red blood cell and lower in the cell plasma. Yet, potassium ions will move from the plasma where it is low into the, what, the red blood cell where it is high. This is our student activity. All you need to do is just take your time, answer this question to actually see your mastery of that topic. All right, this is the answer to the questions in our student activities. Well, you can mark yourself now. I hope you have 100%. So at this time, I want to say thank you so much for joining me in this class. Thanks for learning.